properties that we can see, those are called macroscopic properties in comparison to microscopic properties that we can't see that goes on at the molecular level. So thinking about what we can see for solids like a pencil or the desk you're sitting at, you can see that those that's a solid. Liquids, these uh, take the shape of a container. So think about water, um, that if you have water in a cup and then you spill it on the floor, it will take a different shape. Um, this water is has a definite volume that you can measure the water that was in the cup or spilled on the floor, and it's the same amount in terms of volume, which is measured in liters. Gases take the shape and the volume of their container, and that's because gases are molecules that are moving very quickly. They're spaced apart, and this is uh, comparing solids, liquids, gases, and plasmas. Um, that what's different between the the properties of matter that we um, cannot see in the molecular view is the motion. So gases have a lot of motion going backwards. Liquids have less, and then solids have almost no motion of the molecules. And the reason why there's a difference in motion is due to energy. So you can see in the bottom here is that this is low temperatures. As the temperatures increase, there's more molecular motion. And there's also spacing between the molecules that increases because the molecules move and they move apart from each other. So as you increase the temperature, you increase the energy and you increase the, um, the molecular movement and it changes the physical state from solid to liquid to gas. This is a plasma, which is an ionized gas. So that's a gas that has a lot of molecular motion, but they have their ions instead of just standard particles. The plasma is not normally mentioned in the physical states of matter, um, but plasmas are important because they are uh, they have these ions, the positive and negative, and those uh, have electric fields, and so that's how you have the plasma TV screens. And lightning, which is an example of everyday chemistry or everyday plasma is uh, lightning, which is the flow of electrical charges. So the average citizen is familiar with water on the macroscopic scale. You see water everywhere. But as Chem 9 students, now you guys are more familiar with these representations of water. This is the Lewis structure showing the electrons. These are the shared electrons between the hydrogens and the oxygens. And this is the Lewis structure showing the lone pairs and the bonds, those shared electrons shown as single bonds. And then this is the Vesper shape, which is two bonds and two lone pairs, which is bent. This space filling molecule is the closest representation to how this is in nature, in that you have the bent shape, um, but this also takes up, uh, kind of has boundaries around those atoms of oxygen and hydrogen. Now, this is an interesting situation in that the water molecule, when drawn in two dimensions, is linear. So two, the 2D shape is just three atoms in a line. Um, this is all symmetrical and nice, but we know because of Vesper theory that lone pairs take up more space. And so it forces those two bonds closer together. Instead of being linear, it's bent. And so the result is this water molecule around which life as we know it is, is, is. And if water were actually a linear molecule, and not bent, we would not have life as we know it. So water has its own chapter. In fact, water in some colleges has its own class. So there's that much to understand about the chemistry of water. Some of the unique properties of water. Um, well, first of all, let's start with the fact that there's only three atoms. Uh, it's a very simple molecule, and yet it's very complex. One is a liquid over a very wide range of temperatures, and that's why we have water on Earth. Having water in the liquid state is important for life on Earth. There are other planets, um, such as Mars, that has water in the, in the solid state as ice, but we need water in the liquid form for life as we know it. Now, most small molecules that have only three atoms are gases, or uh, like CO2 or even O2 or N2, those only have two atoms, but those are small molecules. And most small molecules are gases because 
they don't weigh very much and it's very easy to move those molecules apart and add energy to them and turn it into a gas. This is not true of water. Water in its most common state is a liquid. Why is that? Because the molecules are very attracted together and do not move apart from each other even with lots of energy or lots of heat added to it. If you've ever boiled water, you can see it takes a lot of heat to turn water into a gas. Another thing interesting is that water expands as it freezes. If you've ever maybe water into the freezer and it was in glass, the glass will crack. Um, pipes burst in the winter in cold parts of in cold parts of the world, and that's because liquid water, when it becomes ice, will expand as it freezes. And this is because the um, solid version is less dense than the liquid version of water. So this, for all other compounds, the solid is more dense. Going back to look here is that solid particles are tightly packed together and that's dense. Liquid is usually less packed together and less dense. Well, it's opposite for, for water. The solid water, they're actually spread apart and the liquid water is closer together. So this is important for life on Earth, particularly at the poles because when you have solid water being less dense, it floats. And uh, this is not just floating ice cubes, but entire continents made out of ice. So that's the North Pole and the South Pole, upon which those shelves of ice support whole ecosystems. 